Hey, today we're taking a look at section 5.6. We are talking about integrals of exponential and logarithmic functions. We did mention these um, kind of informally in a previous section, but we're just going to um, kind of formalize the formulas for these. We're going to start with exponentials. If you are going to take the integral of e to the x specifically, and this is the one we kind of glossed over before, it's just e to the x. And the way we know that is because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So this integral is kind of, it's just symmetric, easy back and forth, okay? Um, a more generalized, generalized form of this formula is um, the, for, the integral from a, of a to the x. And if you remember, um, the derivative for an exponential was a little more complicated than the derivative for e to the x. And so the integral also is a little more complicated. And this is what it is. It's the exponential itself, and we divide by natural log of a. And if you think about it from a derivative direction and think about the um, the formula for the derivative of an exponential. Remember, we multiply by the natural log of the base. Well, that's what's happening here is you're dividing now by the natural log of the base to cancel that out and get back to the original function. So the way that you see all of these as true is take a look at the right-hand side of them and take the derivative, and you'll see how things are canceling out and getting back to where they are. Um, there is no chain rule in integration, okay? So whereas before when we were doing the derivatives and I said every time I, I write x, that could be like a bunch of stuff, that is not true here. This is a very specific rule and it's only for x, okay? If there's more, if there's more in the exponent, then the rule is use substitution that we did last section. So substitution is going to be your go-to method instead of product quotient chain rule. That's the idea. Okay, let's do an example of this. I think we did um, an e to the x one when we were um, doing substitution. Now, this is, this is complicated, it's a product, it's got a potential chain rule situation in here, so um, the only method that we have to attack this is substitution. So the question is, what do we let u be? Um, some people might be inclined to say, well, let's let u be e to the x, but what that does is it takes the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, um, that's here, but that puts our du under the root, and we don't ever want the du under the root. We always want it out and free at the end, okay? So instead of doing that, let's take our u to be the part that's under the root, which was one of our properties. Oftentimes, you take what's under the root or the denominator to be your u, and let's see if that works out. du dx is 0 plus e to the x. Split your u's and your x's. And look at what we've got. We've got uh, 1 plus e to the x is taken care of there, and e to the x dx is taken care of there. So I have taken care of all of my x terms in the integrand, and I can rewrite this then as um, the square root of u du. So again, the red, I'm checking that the reds all line up, and then I'm substituting in the left-hand side of my two red equations. So I'm going to integrate that. That means I'm going to raise the power, and I'm going to divide by that number, and I'm going to add on a C value. So I get, um, this is going to equal, let's do it here. Let's do notation differently. Let's do this. Okay, equals, there we go, and then flip up, okay, and then we substitute back in for u because there's no um, limits of integration, and this is going to be 1 plus e to the x 
to the 3 halves plus C. And that's your answer. All right, uh, try one of these. Basically, this section is just another chance to practice substitution with a couple different formulas. All right, our next example is going to be the integral of 2x cubed e to the x to the fourth power dx. So again, using this e to the x function, and we have to decide what we're going to let u be. If we let u be all of this, then we're going to get another e to something in our derivative. So just watch what happens here. If u is e to the x to the fourth, then du dx is going to be e to the x to the fourth times the derivative. Okay, and so what we're doing is we're creating an extra e to a bunch of stuff that is not in our original function. So that's too much to have u be. So instead of having u be the whole e to the x, let's just have it be the exponent. And again, I'm picking the exponent because the power in the exponent is higher than the power of the term in front. So that that's probably going to work out nicely for me. If I take the derivative, um, I get that lower power that I'm looking for. Now, if we want to match this up, um, this is taking care of this right here. We'll have an e in there, but that's okay. We've, we've eliminated that whole thing. But what I'm trying to create in this other term is a 2x cubed, and what I have here is a 4x cubed. So I actually need to get rid of a factor of 2. So I'm going to divide through by 2. Well, well, first of all, let's split our u's and x's. So du equals 4x cubed dx. And now I'm going to divide by 2 or multiply by a half. And that's going to get uh, one factor of 2 off this right-hand side. And now we can look at it and see that this lines up with the rest of my equation. The greens line up. Okay, so that means that we're going to substitute in the left-hand side of the equation. And so we get the integral of, um, I'm going to pull the one half out in front. Okay, that's this one half. And then I get e to the u, because I have to compensate for this e still that we didn't uh, substitute in for. And then there's a du takes care of the, two, the 2x cubed dx. Okay, then we're going to integrate using our formula. So this is going to be 1 half e to the u plus c. And then uh, we're going to substitute back in. Right there. And that's going to be our answer. Okay. So really once you figure out what u is, the problems aren't that hard. Okay. Um, all right. A couple more formulas. The integral of x to the negative 1 dx, this is the only power of x that doesn't follow the power rule, okay? And it's because if you, again, if you think about derivatives um, and you think of 1 over x, which is what this is, that is, has a special derivative. That one specific power doesn't follow the power rule. And if you remember from derivatives, that is linked with the natural log. Now, why do we have to have absolute values on this natural log? It's because the domain of the natural log, um, we can only natural log uh, positive numbers or numbers bigger than zero. So no zeros, no negatives is what, what we mean. However, the domain of this is everything except zero. So 1 over x, you can plug negative values in for 1 over x, but you can't do that for natural log. So we have to throw those absolute values on there so we make sure that we're not putting a negative number in for into the natural log function. Okay, so that's one. Um, I'd like you to memorize this one. Um, you should memorize this, and you should also memorize this guy right here. Um, in my opinion, this one is borderline for memorization. I probably, if I haven't taught this for a semester, I usually have to look that one up. So 
Um, I'll throw that on a formula sheet for you. But I do want you to know this guy right here. And then this one I would not expect you to memorize. The integral of natural log of x is x ln x minus x plus c. Or if you choose, you can factor the x out of each term and just have it be this. Okay, so either one of those. And that's not intuitive. Um, I mean, the only way you'd see that is by taking the derivative of this side, and you'll see that you get natural log of x. Okay, also this one is not intuitive. A base other than e for logs is going to be x over ln a ln x minus 1 plus c. So um, these two formulas will be on a formula sheet. All you need to do is understand how to use them and also manipulate u substitution to fit you into this form. Okay, so let's do an example of this. So on the surface, this looks like a pretty normal 5-5 uh, five, five problem. Again, fractions, oftentimes u is going to be the denominator. The denominator happens to be the highest power, which is also good. So that's what I'm going to do. The derivative is going to be 4x cubed plus 6x. Uh, 6x. And uh, if you compare that to this piece up here, we're just off by a factor of 2. So I need to divide through by 2 or multiply by a half. So let's do that. And that's going to create exactly what I want. That takes care of the numerator and the dx. And my u value is taking care of the denominator. So all I have to do is keep the form of what I have, which is a fraction, and use on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to pull this one half outside and the, keep the du inside. And then I'm going to integrate using my formulas. And as we saw here, the integral of x to the negative 1, or 1 over x, is going to be ln of the absolute value of x. Only now we're using u. And then I substitute back in for u. So this is going to be x to the fourth plus 3x squared. Okay, and in this case, um, you this is x to the fourth, which is always a positive number. And this is x squared, which is always a positive number. And this is a plus, which is always going to create a positive number. So in this specific case, we don't need the absolute values, and you can drop those. Um, I wouldn't mark you wrong if you didn't drop them. I just want to kind of point that out that sometimes the book will drop absolute values and that is the reason um, is if that uh, what you're taking the log of is positive. Okay, um, let me have you take a um, do an example 5.45 Okay, so pause the video and do that. And um, then I think you're ready to go for your homework. I um, These guys just work exactly like they see. So if you've got the natural log of stuff, then this is how you, how you write it out in the formula. So I'm going to let you kind of, I'm not going to walk through all those formulas for you. I'm just going to let you navigate some of those in the homework. And uh, we'll do some more examples in class.